Yeah, yeah, Mavis. Tell it like it is. Take us there. And you have taken yourself to Live from the Heartland, 98.7 FM. Like every Saturday morning, we're here from 9 to 10, talking to good people, doing interesting, good work, and uh, playing a little music, and, you know, just generally fooling around. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Kate. How you doing, you guys? Blissed out. I missed out? Blissed out. Oh, you're blissed out. Oh, yeah. well, very good. Glad well, to be here. It's amazing that you managed to do that, Michael. You are a good guy to be blissed out. Uh, it's been a very sad week in our nation. I don't want to uh, bring us all down, but I think we already started out there today and yesterday and ever since Valentine's Day. Um, while the nation, nation does suffer another high school shooting, um, we have two DACA deals shot down. The the vaunted deal maker that sits in the White House uh, evidently cannot make a deal to save 800,000 people's lives. I'm afraid the wing nuts have really taken over. Um, even Bannon leaving has some sanity has left the policy makers at the White House. They had a deal in their hand. They had it twice this week and they turned it away. It's uh, They could have had their damn wall and uh, we would have saved the dreamers. And it's looking more and more bleak. Um, either one of those things happen. Yeah. The, um, uh, locally, uh, at least statewide, there, a poll came out this week. Um, evidently, JB on his apology tour has uh, slipped a little bit in the polls. And, uh, and now Chris Kennedy ap appeared in second place. I thought Dan Biss was in second place, but what I heard last night said that Kennedy slipped ahead of him. So. We have a new campaign here. Yeah, it it's is. It's no longer two millionaires fighting it out with their billions. We actually have three billionaires and a middle-class governor who are fighting it out. There seems to be a real race here amongst three. Tom, the way you call We're it, middle-class governor. Who's the middle-class governor and who's it's, the it's, third billionaire? It's Dan Biss and Rahner he's including. And it, I know, oh. it's like you have to figure it out. Yeah, it's well, uh, I'm slower than I, I did. I figured it out as soon as he said it. Three billionaires must be including that Republican guy. Uh, we also have movement on the assessor's race. Evidently, that's a two-person race now. Looks like uh, Fritz Kage will have a clear shot at the incumbent burials. Yeah. Who this week had to suffer through his own department issuing a study that talks about how inequitable the whole assessment system really is. Yeah. Uh, Which was confirming the report that we talked about a couple weeks ago. Journalists uh, produced in the Tribune a phenomenal series this past summer off of work that was done a year ago that was has been taking a look at this. And we've all known for years that the system was wrong. Certain candidates consider it corrupt because of the pay-to-play process we have to get your assessments lowered. And what's ended up is that rich people with great homes pay less than poor people with less valuable homes. Well, what will be interesting is to see whether or not people, um, and we've, we've got to start talking about people with more means as opposed to saying rich people, like they're 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 uh, unsalvageable. Oh, I love rich people. I think that, you know, I want to see a few of them them vote, vote for Kagi uh, against their own self-interest. Exactly. Yeah. And speaking of Kagi, there's a phone bank for Fritz at the uh, Our Revolution Illinois using the offices of our friends at 2129 Northwestern Avenue. And that is today from 11 to 5 p.m. You don't have to be on the phone for six hours, but if you want to come in and give it an hour, that will be a huge help for a very important race. These um, phone banks are real important to get voters energized. It's really only a month, five weeks before we need to vote, and early voting is a March 5th. Quarter. March 5th, Coming it up this week. Yeah. So it's it's really important that we get every single voter to the poll, even if you think it's a foreordained conclusion. This year, it's not. This is the primary. We have an important governor's race, and we have an important assessor's race, at the very least. We want to mention in our broadcast area that everyone needs to be ready to do a write-in for Cam Davis. There was a vacancy that occurred after the ballot was prepared, and uh, Cam Davis would be a great replacement. This is Water Reclamation District, very critical backroom agency that we all should know more about. Write in Cam Davis when we get to the Water Reclamation District. And Mary Rita Wookie, 
Council yeah, Mary Rita Luke is running for the seat that is uh, being vacated by uh, Ms. Fine, who is running for the seat that's being vacated by Dan Biss. So the little musical chairs thing happens. Um, but Mary Rita Luke is not uh, your average uh, uh, regular Democrat. She was a fellow uh, Bernie delegate candidate. Um, she lives in Skokie and she is an activist for many, many years. Really wonderful mother of a, she raised an activist. Uh, her daughter Hannah is part of Organization of the Northeast and, or Chicago, whatever they call it now, Chicago One, North Side One, I'm sorry. I'm one showing my North age. Side. <laughs> yes. One North Side. Anyway, those of you who are in the Skokie Evanston district that, in, that was represented by uh, Ms. Fine, uh, please check out Mary Rita Luke. She is without a doubt the smartest one on the ballot. Uh, and you know, for the last month or so, even longer, we've been t uh, pumping up the third annual Live from the Heartland Onward benefit. Yay! And uh, it's, it happened. It, it happened. actually happened. And we had a really wonderful time uh, last Sunday, the 11th, at the uh, Heartland Bar, formerly the Red Line Tap, formerly Royce. And uh, we had a lot of people show up. We had our own Nolan Chin who is here engineering today, and he is wonderful on the piano. We had the Young Strachey All-Stars. We had the uh, original Chicago Blues All-Stars, and some of those fellows are gonna be here today with us. Uh, we had a couple of uh, dudes that go way back to Wilderness Road. We had Warren Lemming and Nate Herman, and Susan O'Halloran did a little uh, uh, story. Great story. We had Lucy Smith doing a wonderful Youngbloods tune, oh Smile on Your Brother. Oh my gosh. Uh, Bucky <laughs> Hawker was there, Stan Champion, uh, Nicholas Barron, and of course Corky Siegel was there again. And yeah. Corky uh, just happens to be playing um, on February 25th. I want to call your attention to it. It's called Swing Both Ways, meaning blues and classical. And he'll be at the live at 210 which is on Green Bay Road up in Highwood. And that's Sunday the 25th. Jeannie and Sparrow, there. too. And they were there. Yeah, Jeannie and Sparrow, Jason McGinnis with the, the Young Strackies. Yeah. It was, it was wonderful. And, and really, let's applaud Lynn Orman for her incredible Putting together work. a great show. Yay, Lynn! Yay, Lynn. It's Yay. like uh, the old rock and roll reviews, you know. Every band does a few tunes. Oh, amazing. They come out at the low state of the Brooklyn Paramount or the Regal Theater. Uh, we need a big place to uh, make it look like that next time. Next time. Next time it'll be a bigger venue. We oh. appreciate people turning out on a, uh, a snowy weekend. Um, everyone had who showed up really did have a great time because yep. it was phenomenal music. And we'll have better food next year and, and even a better, a better agenda and lineup and everything else. Well, we need more food to make it more festive. Uh, John, we went yeah. to the car. February 24th loud. in Rogers Park. What does equity look like? Um, Chicago United for Equity is having a forum next Saturday at 10 a.m. at Gale Elementary Academy, who we'll be talking about a lot this morning because there's a lot going on at Gale. There's also a fundraiser for Gale this week. On, uh, tomorrow, the 18th from 6.30 to 8.30, um, there is a, a benefit for Gale uh, at Rogers Park Social. And uh, that should be this is a community event to support the school, a number of community members are putting it together. Uh, please turn out because you'll hear more about what's going on at this exciting school in the far north end of Chicago before you get to Evanston, our true United Nations school up there. Um, um, there's one other of those uh, United for Equity deals, uh, and that's Thursday at Sullivan High School. Um, again, it's about racial economic equity. Um, in the community. I'm not sure what this group is, but we'll find out more about them. And finally, the last item, right? Yes. Is uh, the Network 49 Better Funding Stronger Schools Forum, which is coming up on Tuesday, February 27th, 7 to 8.30 p.m. at Sullivan High School Auditorium, 6631 North Bosworth. We will uh, have talking uh, as resources on that night Ralph Martiri, who is the executive director for the Center of Bud for Budget. What a guy. Tax he lays it out. He really does. He's, he's one of the few people who can um, make sense uh, of the uh, funding formulae uh, for a lot of different governor, gubernatorial, I mean, governmental <laughs> programs. Um, sorry. We will also have uh, on that panel Jenny Biggs of Raise Your Hand and Joanna Sue an LSC representative from Gale Community Academy.
that will be a really good night in the neighborhood, uh, learning something together and possibly moving into ideas about how to make it better going forward. That is, again, Tuesday, February 27th. And we'll, we'll announce it next week, too. Kyle Hillman joins us now. He's an elected local school council member at Gale Academy, up on the far north side, Gale Community Academy. Yes. And uh, Kyle, welcome. Thank you for Your second me. appearance in two weeks. Yeah, right. We promo this interview. <laughs> We'd love that you week. coming on to do a little advance last week. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> that was fun. It was, it was uh, an intentional. And I know that's why <laughs> millions of you are here today, because you heard it last week. That's Give right. us a picture of Gale School. Why did you run for the local school council? How long have you been there? What, what, what attracted you as a volunteer to, to step up and help out this local public school? <laughs> sure. So, uh, you know, uh, I live in the Gale uh, area, school area. <coughs> Um, you know, it's north of Howard is, is this little segment uh, of the northernest most part of Chicago, and, and for, for far too long that section has been kind of forgotten. Uh, I think it was it was in between two different legislative districts. It was uh, the current alderman didn't spend the resources and time into that na neighborhood, and so what we had in the center of that neighborhood was a school, a school that had a reputation that wasn't positive uh, from the outside, and so. Uh, when I was first looking at uh, how do I how do I help this area? How do I get more involved in my community? Um, that school was the first place that came to mind, and so you know I, I immediately jumped into the LSC. At the time, the school was uh, from the inside. When she started looking at the finances, was a, was in a solid position, but needed help. It needed extra investment. It needed community support, and so I thought this would be a great opportunity to come in. Little did I know the ROM was going to change the uh, mayor manual, was going to change the funding formula to per people funding, and then completely gut the school. Within three years, we lost $1.5 million of annual funding in the school. And basically, everything that's not tied down has been cut. Uh, it was one of those schools that was on the, uh, the list to close. Uh, so we actually uh, organized right. our, our parents remember. and our community members to, to fight that, and we actually were able to fight that back. Uh, and, and keep the school open. So that is, this dates back to, to that, right before Ram, Ram, uh, Ram closed all the schools. Correct. Ram the Ramer. Yeah. Now, now, Connie, the development of both the Chicago Math and Science Academy and the UNO privately run charter schools that were tapping into your population. Absolutely. So you have this, this frontal attack by the administration um, to, uh, to gut community schools uh, with lower enrollment. And then you had this, this backside attack from the charter schools, which were pulling, actively pulling kids out. When UNO, for example, went into the Rogers Park community, uh, they actually had people on our campus at the school recruiting Latino families to move them out of our school to purposely pull those resources out of the school and into a different uh, institution. So it's it's not only the resources, it's also the resegregation of school Correct. schools um, that no make me crazy about these uh, charters who are unanswerable to the community. They can make whatever rules they want and expel kids willy-nilly. Right, and, and, and that, uh, that effect is magnified when you hear <coughs> what it happens to those to the kids that are still left at the school, didn't get to move out, or didn't get pulled out into a different system, right. is that we, we are drastically pulling those resources out of a school that already has no resources. And so uh, what, what ends up happening is, is that you, you have a school that's run by um, volunteer opportunity. So if, we only have after school programs if somebody steps up and actually gives it to us. Uh, we don't have a librarian. We don't have a technology instructor. We don't have the basic fundamental things that you think of when you, when you talk about an elementary school because everything that wasn't tied down, this administration has cut. And so the question becomes, how do you actually go forward when you're constantly being pulled back? A smart academy. <coughs> Correct. Yes? Correct. Tell us what the smart academy is and what you're trying to do to bring a new shine to Gail. Absolutely. So one of the great things that we do is we, we've got a new principal who is probably the most energetic entrepreneurial you know, principal I've ever seen. And he reached out to a program that he had at Sullivan High School, which was a smart health clinic. And this to me is a game changer for Gail uh, Community Academy. And a smart health clinic, basically what it is, is it provides free health and mental health services to every child at the school, every parent of those child, anyone that lives in that house of that child, and all the teachers and faculty. So it's, it's, it's complete wraparound service for from health and mental health services for, for the students that attend that school. Who puts this together? Who's the, who's the uh, source of the smart clinic? 
So, so, the, so the, there have been health clinics in schools, um, most of them have not been very successful. In fact, right. we've seen quite a few of them are closed because of cost, uh, utilization purposes, etc. Hey, I'm old enough to remember when Sullivan did the first clinic in the 80s when they had a, also a special program in, in that high school for kids and it was, it was revolutionary that they, that they were taking care of kids. Absolutely, but the problem that we saw with Sullivan okay. is that utilization was, was low. Yeah. And so th this, is, this model, the SMART model, was created by uh, Melanie Jin from the Jin Group um, in partnership with CVS. And, and what this model does is it, is it, it takes a proactive, active uh, care services rather than the, the reactive. I think when we, we talk about how we treat mental health, and particularly health services, it's always reactive, right? So it's, it's till somebody um, shows uh, suicidal attempts, then we, then we provide those mental health services. When somebody um, has uh, serious health issues, that's when we go to the hospital. The opposite and, of preventative. Correct. Right. And so what the SMART model does is it actually does evaluations of every single kid in the school um, from the beginning. So when you, when you walk into that school, they'll do an evaluation, both a, a health as well as a mental health. And then they tie that to your education. So if we can provide good health and, and mental health services, you can, you can improve your educational stuff. So if we start seeing kids slipping behind, those kids go back into another evaluation. So we can try to figure out what are the underlying reasons why this kid is challenged, or whether it's community, whether it's their, their social emotional needs, whether it's family, uh, and then we can, we can attack that piece of it. Wow. When, what do you need? What is, the, what is the drive now to get funding? Yeah, so for us to have, make this happen, um, we need to raise $150,000. CVS has already agreed to match that $150,000. Um, this model can launch and it'll be self-sustaining with that just a $300,000 uh, seed money, which is really, really, really cheap for a health clinic compared to the $1.5 to $3 million that, that normally they put on a price tag. And part of the reasons why we can do this is that because we have so much utilization. So for example, um, at, at, a, at, uh, at Sullivan, there was a 15 to 20% utilization. 15 to 20% of the kids actually used the clinic. And if you talk to some of the kids before the, the, this clinic, uh, the smart model went in, it was that's where the pregnant girls go, right? And so that, it, it was kind of had that stigma, had the, 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 that, that we place on health and mm -hmm. health services. Right now, Sullivan is at 86, 87% utilization. And so because there's a large utilization, our reimbursement rates are, are higher. So we are able to, to uh, capture more of that revenue to make sure that this is sustained. So if we can raise that $150,000, we can put in, to me, which is just revolutionary for these kids, uh, this, this clinic. We've already raised about 47000 of it. Um, some of that has come from the community in small dollars, which has been really amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, we also received a very, very large donation from Heather Staines, uh, Leo Smith, and the Staines Foundation mm -hmm. uh, to help us get this thing going forward, uh, which we're really appreciative of. And, and you know, we, we need to continue to, uh, to raise and get closer to that number. Is there a time frame? Do you have to have it by? So uh, the target date is the end of April, um, which is a very small window. Really? I mean, we're, we're, we're hauling. So uh, we feel like we're going to get closer. Uh, we feel if we would get closer, we might that we we'll still be able to do it. The, the other thing too is some of the things that this is just hard costs. Some of those things can be in kind, and so uh, and we can reduce that 150,000 asks. Mm -hmm. So right now, we're uh, the Gin Group is producing uh, some materials for us of what materials they need, so we can then uh, approach also medical suppliers, uh, uh, builder groups, those mm -hmm. kind of things to see if there's some of those in kind sure. uh, supplies that can be donated to. To that so How do we help? Is there a GoFundMe or you know some some site we can go to to sign up? So we do have a website. It's GaleGrowsKids.org. That's plural. Kids. Um, GaleGrowsKids.org. You can go ahead and make a donation. Um, we we obviously need large donations, but we we this is something that's really important is that we need small donations. So if you if you can contribute ten dollars, that is majorly important for us because we have to be able to show the funder. That there is community support for this. Mm -hmm. So, so a ten dollar donation might not seem like a lot towards the, towards our big one hundred fifty thousand dollar goal, but having your name attached to this project and as a community or as a business is critically important for us to getting this across the finish line. Is to say, look, look at all this community support for this school and and for this clinic. Can you talk a little bit about other stuff going on in and around the Gale community? So. No, I just had a similar question. I, I remember hearing that uh, there was a, like a plethora of politicians showing up to help paint the place. 
Yes. And I wonder if you could talk about that. And was Gale the school that also had the greenhouse up on the, the top floor? That uh, is that still happening? Yes. So tell us about those. Those are things. wonderful things too. So, so City Year uh, has been in our school, which has been incredible help. So when you don't have a lot of resources to get those volunteers in your school every single day, helping the teachers, helping those students has been incredibly important. But City Year also chose Gale Community Academy as their volunteer for MLK Day. And we had over a thousand individuals. It was ridiculous. It was amazing. <laughs> it was park. You know, I think a lot of people don't get that far up north and a lot of people don't see that community uh, at, at that close up as they, as they did that day. And to see that many volunteers caring about these kids who are incredible kids who just need that, that help. It was, it was, it was incredible to see. It was just, it was, uh, they, they, they brought a, a bus load from Northwestern, right? It was, yes. <laughs> they brought a bus load from everywhere. I yeah, mean, like, right. they just kept right. piling in. And, and yeah, we had some elected officials there, but I, I was so moved by how many people actually came to the school and, and to see the kids' faces that they met the next day. Because the whole place has been muraled up. Yeah. I mean, we've got <laughs> pictures of uh, MLK, of Obama, of, of, of Chicago history, and, and just to see their faces light up for their school that, Frankly, you know, we needed some paint. It yeah. was starting to chip away a little bit, and, and to, for those kids to be uh, to, to go into that school and to see it revitalized was was amazing. Uh, we do have a greenhouse. Uh, we also have an outdoor uh, 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 gardens. I mean, we we really have some amazing gems in the school that people just don't realize. Uh, and we just we just need to get that next step of that that differentiator, and I think the clinic is that. Kyle Hillman, uh, we're sending people to something called GaleGrowsKids.org to give your ten bucks. Please do today, really. Don't don't forget about it. Do it now before you forget. And uh, thank you for all that you do, Kyle thank, Hillman. Thank you. I think you guys have said Gale Community Academy quite a few times. You guys could be our sponsor here. But. Right on. <laughs> or you could be our sponsor. <laughs> thank you so much, and we'll have you back any old time. Dude. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. All Thank right, you, you are listening to Live from the Heartland, 88.7 FM and WLUW.org. Please like us on Facebook. We're going to hear more from our favorite gal, Miss Mavis Staples.